So um, today I'll be talking about so Nouveau, a recap of what has been going on since the last update, and uh, ongoing and future work. Maybe not. I just kept the title. <coughs> okay, so we'll start by... Uh, when was the last update that we gave? It was at POSDAM in 2012. So since then, no updates, so many improvements. So let's make another one. So the first, uh, the most important item on the list is Kepler support. So it was released in March 2012. We got mod setting uh, released in, uh, the same day as the, the, the Kepler, so it was nice. A few days later, we actually got support, but very experimental, and uh, uh, so we didn't release it, but it was there. Uh, and the final support for 2D and 3D acceleration was, was released a few, yeah, a month, less than a month after. And it was, um, so the reason why we waited for that was because uh, we rewrote uh, LibGRM, not LibGRM, the whole thing, but Nouveau, yeah, the Nouveau side. So... What are the updates for the kernel? First, we left staging, yeah, in Linux 3.4. Uh, then there was a major internal uh, re-architecturing. Uh, we call that the core architecture. It was released in 3.7. So now uh, the, this core architecture is more like uh, it's chipset-based. Uh, chip it's uh, object-oriented, so we have constructor, destructors, and uh, init and fini uh, hooks. Um, the nice thing about the per chipset co code set is um, it should limit regression when we add support for new cards. Like if you change some code for, I don't know, Fermi, we don't share code with the TNT2 anymore. Uh, because we used to do that. Like, yeah, some stuff didn't change that much, so we used the same function and uh, add some ifs inside it, and uh, we broke uh, a few times old cards because of that. So now, all, if the code is really different, we create a new C file. So if you look at the number of C files we have now, it has increased by a tenfold. I don't know, may, maybe more. But yeah, it's a nice thing in the end. And sorry for the compile time, because now it, it got much longer. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, it was a contrib contribution by Ben Skeds. Then we got uh, Optimus Prime support, so it's not really Nouveau related, just a bit. So it was uh, contributed by Dave Early uh, in Linux 3.9, and uh, synchronization between drivers is an ongoing task of uh, Martin Langhorst. Langhorst. So if you want to have more information, you can just visit our wiki with the Optimus page, and it will tell you how to set up everything. Um, I'll make a demo after that, but after because it may crash. <laughs> so, uh, power management. So it's not reclocking or anything, it's just thermal management at first. Uh, so temperature monitoring uh, has been added for most cards. It was there before, but yeah. Now it's uh, a bit closer to what the uh, proprietary driver does. Um, so basically we can now uh, shut down the computer if the uh, temperature is too high which is uh, about 130 degrees, so until you reach that, should be okay, or if there is a bug. Uh, it works except with the I2C only temperature probes, uh, because right now with uh, LM sensors, we don't have an in-kernel uh, interface to actually read back the sensor data. The only way to read it is for the user to read it. We've been uh, pressuring the uh, LM sensors guy for, I don't know, four years, maybe more, to actually change that, we proposed patches for that, but they said, okay, and never actually went back to it. We made like four ver versions of it. Um, I think Samsung, Samsung, Intel, and uh, Matthew Garrett actually pressured too, but yeah, they don't want to do it, apparently. So if you have a card like that, then sorry, not our fault. Uh, for fan management, we added static fan management uh, in Linux 3.7. Uh, and uh, we got experimental automatic fan management uh, in uh, Linux 3.9. Now it should work, uh, uh, because I fixed a few, uh, a few bugs in uh, 3.11. And we are wondering when we are going to actually make it default. So right now, unless you are on Fermi, 
and uh, in this case, the BIOS uploads a microcode that uh, does that in uh, inside the card, then you don't have fan management by default. Not nice. Okay, so if you have any problem, contact me. Uh, yeah, contact me, New Proof, Martin Perez. So we'll move to the user space. May rush to the, uh, through the slide very fast. So if you have any questions, stop me. Uh, LibDRM Nuvo 2. So it's an update to uh, the, our LibDRM um, interface. So the reason why we made this rewrite was because we wanted to expose the VM address of BOs. So it, this is very important for OpenCL. Um, we also now support multiple threads or applications per channel. The channel is uh, the context for, uh, well, uh, GPU context. So the reason why we did that is because um, there is a fixed amount of uh, hardware contexts, and we may need to share them in the future. If we run more than 128 applications on NV50, uh, then it crashes. We don't support that. OpenGL application. And with uh, the rise of uh, QML uh, using OpenGL for every app, then yeah, we need to do something. So in LibGRM2, it's it's there, but uh, Misa doesn't use it anymore. Uh, not yet. Um, we re reworked the uh, relocation mechanism, but I won't go in details. Uh, it reduced uh, the number of occurrences of the no space error. So basically, it's uh, when you try to allocate buffers and uh, you don't really have space anymore. So it should be better for that. And it was released in April 2012 by Ben, ben Skeggs. And he has been uh, working on that with uh, Christopher Bermilla, our Gallium, main Gallium developer. Um, then, as we released the new LibDRM, we had to update our, um, the, the users of uh, LibDRM, which was all the MESA drivers. Uh, so basically, uh, we updated all of them, and then NVFX got rewritten and renamed NV30, so now it works better, hopefully. And so yeah, and um, it got various fixes to other drivers on, on the, um, like the very old one, Nouveau Vieux, if you remember this one, for very old cards. Uh, this one got quite a lot of fixes, but I don't think many users use them anymore. So video decoding, yeah. Uh, so Martin Lankost uh, actually demoed that at FOSDEM 2012, if I remember correctly, but it got included. So it was for Fermi, uh, at the time Fermi, and then, well, with Kepler, uh, it actually, Kepler got support too. It relies on uh, user, it, you, it relied on user extracted firmwares so you actually needed to make an MMIO, an MMIO trace of the proprietary driver in order to extract the, uh, the BIOS with a script. The, not the BIOS, the microcodes. So it was very tedious. Then uh, Ilya Mirkin, a, new, a newcomer, well, he was there at the beginning of the project, but then he kind of stopped and came back. So he worked on uh, adding video decoding support on uh, all the cards like the Tesla uh, NV50 family, so VP2, 3, and 4. He wrote a script to extract the firmwares uh, from the blob of, uh, binary without executing it. it uh, it's just looking for signatures inside the, the binary to find the, mic uh, the microcode. <coughs> so now we have a, a script to actually extract all the firmwares. And... Uh, and is also working on the video planes for all the generations. So color keying and all that. <laughs> yes, lovely. And he's using the uh, DRM plane interface to expose that, uh, expose that. So for more information, you can go on the video acceleration uh, on our wiki. And we'll actually look at it right now. So there are many engines, VP1, 2, VP1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if you want to know what card actually has what version, got that. And so we can see that there are only three codecs supported. It's the same one as NVIDIA. Of course, it's the same microcode. 
so H264, VC1, and MPEG4. Oh, and uh, of course, MPEG1 and 2, sorry. Uh, so if you are on Fermi or, and, uh, and Kepler, then you have everything. VP2, yeah, you don't have everything, but yeah, you have uh, the feature matrix if you want to refer to it. It's there, along with the uh, how to extract the firmware. So you download the script, download the code, uh, the the blob, the proprietary driver, I shouldn't say blob, uh, and then you run the script and you've got all the firmwares. You just need to copy them to uh, lib firmware nouveau and that's it. Here you have all the uh, information about what versions of the kernel or MISA you need to actually make use of it, and then how to use vDepo and uh, XVMC. Then we have a new feature that is actually very nice. Wait a sec. <coughs> So, um, nine. It's a Direct 3D nine uh, state tracker for Gallium. It was started by Joachim Sinholt and uh, completed by Christopher Bermila. Uh, it runs properly Skyrim, Civilization Five, Anno, blah, and StarCraft too, and it's up to two times faster than uh, the Wine implementation. So the, you have the announcement and. Uh, the source tree if you're interested. It's not included in MESA yet, it's not merged, but eventually maybe it will end up there. If you pressure uh, Kalim a bit, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is the um, for Direct 3D9. Uh, there used to be a DirectX 10 and 11 state tracker in MESA, but it got deleted because um, Gallium wasn't really ready for that, uh, the uh, interface, so he was uh, using a lot of hacks by actually sending the, um, how to say, he was bypassing TGSI to uh, send, information, send information to his compiler. Uh, so it wasn't very nice. But 9 actually is nice. <coughs> Performance counters, this is a new stuff too. Um, so, Christoph Vermiller added Kepler support for uh, MP counters. So, the MP counters are in PGraph, which is the main engine for uh, OpenGL and OpenCL. Uh, and so, the signals that have been added, or the events, hardware events that have uh, been added, are all GP GPU oriented. That's because uh, the only interface that is um, uh, proposed by NVIDIA to query them is um, uh, Cup TI, yeah, and uh, it's only um, and that's that's the only one running on uh, Linux. If you want OpenGL uh, related events, then you need to uh, to use Windows for that. So it's problematic when you want to trace all that because we cannot use the tools that we have on Linux and we needed to actually make tools for Windows. So we're, uh, there's patches out to support the AMD performance counter queries, which is just kind of a generic performance counter query framework. Do you think it would be hard to hook oh, these? Oh, it's already hooked and in Mesa. For to, well, but the, oh, oh, the, 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 the GL stuff hasn't landed yet, so it can't be hooked up. Oh, okay. Yet. But I mean, to hook this up with the, the work that Ken's been doing so that applications can just get at these counters. It should be easy. Uh, yeah. Mm -mm. So um, this the, the Fermi support has been added by Samuel Pitoise, I forgot a T, <coughs> uh, which was my um, uh, GSOC student this year. Uh, and we've hooked it to Gallium HUD, just to uh, prove that it works with Gallium. I'll make a demo of that, but again, at the end, because I don't want to crash the computer before going through all the slides. <coughs> So, um, then related to our tools, um, so we have NV Tools, which is a collection of uh, NVIDIA related tools and documentations. It's not only NVIDIA, uh, because uh, Rob Clark is actually using it for 
Free Drino. Um, I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, mo more people are going to use it because yeah, it's, uh, it's a very nice tool set. Um, so the repository was actually um, mostly hosted by Path uh, Scale, uh, but it was also hosted by MWK, uh, so our lead reverse engineer. Let's put it this way, and uh, SourceForge. So we had three repos that we needed that, that was kept in sync using uh, Git uh, hooks, so it wasn't really reliable. So actually pressured, and um, we moved to one repo with uh, every dev uh, as administrators. So Pathscale doesn't really like that, but they are admin too, so they didn't lose rights. Uh, so if you want more information, I explained everything in this uh, email. Then we also changed the documentation. Uh, we now... Um, so we had text-based documentation for of the uh, NVIDIA hardware, which we actually reversed. Uh, but all the links were written as uh, plain text, so it wasn't really easy to move uh, in the documentation. So after the, the change, we still have text-based documentation, which was a feature, not a bug. And uh, But now it can generate pretty HTML documentation with nice links, and I, I can show you that. So basically, it's the, um, we use the same system as Python, so you may recognize the documentation. Uh, so you have links. Um, like you can click there. If you decide to check what ptimer is, you can check. Just click. And um, address, intra, then up, click on it, and you get exactly where you're supposed to, to land. So it's very nice. And uh, this is the documentation, how it looked like before. So let's find a link. Mm. OK, I can't, cannot find the link. But it was just the name of the, uh, of the file that needed to be grabbed to find the information you wanted. OK. So. Falcon, we have now a Falcon C compiler. So Falcon, I used to refer to it as FOC, the flexible microcode, of course. <laughs> it's an uh, ISA that has been developed by maybe NVIDIA, maybe someone else, but at least only NVIDIA uses it, as far as I know. Uh, so the C compiler was started by Shinpei Kato. He's a re uh, Japanese researcher. He actually came to XDC in 2011. Yeah. Uh, he worked on a GPU scheduler, if you remember. Uh, so the reason why he made that was because he wanted to generate PGRAPH firmwares to do um, resource management. Uh, so he, if you want to see the paper, it's there. And if you want to see the source code, it's here. And it needs to be extended to support PDMN. PDMN, you'll hear about it tomorrow. So after the compiler, we now have a decompiler. That is nice. It's a new feature. Um, it it has been started by Marcin Kosielniki, yeah. uh, so MWK. Uh, it works on Falcon and VP2 macros. Uh, so this VP2 macro is like very very simple. Uh, Falcon is kind of complex. It will support eventually Extensa and maybe VUC. VUC is something that is uh, video decoding related. And uh, it will be released after Marcin's math thesis is uh, done. So it should be by the end of this month, so pretty soon. So if you want to see an example of how it looks like, so we'll start with a simple function. Up. So it looks a bit like Python. Um, you just get the node, the registers, the input and output. And if there is no call function, uh, no call uh, inside the function, then you see a, a nice function like that. And if there is a call, or if it's a bit uh, too difficult for the moment for the decompiler, then you get something like that. So you have um, uh, so the function entry point. Uh, so in 
tells you what are the parameters or what is actually used by the function, then uh, out is what has been changed. So as this function only called one uh, another function, this is the address of the function, then you only see the differences. <coughs> it's going to be very nice because uh, before that we had to decompile stuff uh, by hand and there is a shitload of code. So when we have this kind of uh, expressions, now we just need to read it. So it's not done yet. Uh, the decompiler is less than two weeks old. So, yeah. It, it's going to improve. And, uh, yeah. So that's it for the tools. Next, next the community-oriented stuff. So uh, we've been cleaning Bugzilla, the, our Bugzilla. Um, so we went from uh, 410 to 167 uh, bugs. So the way we did that was closing all the bugs that hadn't been updated since 2011. Yes. <laughs> uh, then we actually asked people to repro reproduce um, on all the other bugs uh, if, it, if they were able to reproduce on the current Nuvo. And we actually fixed a few bugs on the way. So, good. Uh, then uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the free desktop move to the new wiki system, so EQWiki. Um, <coughs> so the reason why we had this move was because it, uh, there was a lot of spam and spammers and uh, it was taking a lot of time to uh, Jan to uh, fix that. So now it's harder to add content because you need to ask someone at free desktop to uh, add your uh, login information, but I'm sure you know because you must have done that to add yourself to the attending, attendance list. Yeah, exactly. So now we can use Git to actually uh, send patches for the, the wiki, which is very, very nice. And so we uh, actually took advantage of this uh, and we started to... Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't finish this one. <coughs> Copy paste. Uh, we actually uh, rewrote most of the wiki, uh, so now it looks nice, and uh, we actually have uh, useful links and not something that links to uh, wiki pages that were valid four years ago or five years ago. So basically, everything is on this uh, page, and then you can get to the feature matrix, the code names, how to get acceleration, optimus support, how to install Nuvo. This one was pretty outdated. Uh, kernel module parameters because it wasn't documented anywhere. Uh, yeah. So that's about it. And flash news. This morning you may have seen that uh, NVIDIA has started uh, releasing documentation and has actually decided to help us as much as they can. They cannot promise anything, but yeah. So we got uh, a contact email so as we can send uh, information, uh, no questions. Um, they are willing to improve the out-of-the-box experience of users. And uh, they sent us a documentation about uh, VBR, a VBR stable, a few VBR stables. So welcome to Nuvo NVIDIA. Okay, so if you have questions, I can answer the questions. If not, then I have demos. Uh, microphone, please. <coughs> um, so under the, the power management stuff, you actually were mostly talking about thermal management. Yeah. Um, it's power related, right? Yeah. <laughs> all, that, all those watts that you're just dumping into the air, we can now dump into the air more effectively without slagging the GPU. I suppose that's nice. Um, I assume that actually being able to reclock the GPU is still a open project. It is. It um, is. Uh, has, has there progress that's been made, or is that just, well, we, we keep trying different things and we keep shrugging our shoulders and not making a lot of progress? Uh, I guess this is a question for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll make a talk about power management in an, on NVIDIA cards. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is something that I'll address. Cool, thank you. Uh, there is uh, someone else. So 
I was looking a lot at your wiki as during the transition uh, just to get some ideas about stuff. And I really, I think it's a really good wiki. I just wonder what strategy you guys use to keep it up to date. And do you have any automated tools that are used to update it? No, I guess we just committed to have a, an updated wiki. That's it. Uh, the feature matrix is not really updated, but then it's difficult to know when a feature is actually working or not. Uh, so, yeah. But that's, I, I think that's it. For the install Nouveau, then I guess it's not going to change that much over time. Uh, the video decoding page is the one that has been that has seen the most uh, changes recently because it was a feature that actually uh, progressed very fast. Other than that, that's it. We just sit and work. <laughs> okay. Then I'll demo uh, first Prime. So Prime um, is the uh, open source implementation of uh, Optimus, so to do offloading, uh, GPU offloading, so you can uh, decide on which GPU you want to execute something. So to prove it works, um, when I use the Intel GPU, I get the Intel GPU, and when I want to use uh, my NVIDIA card, then I can uh, use the NVIDIA card. So this is, I'm going to show you with GLX gears. Oh, we've been lucky. Um, Usually it's black, but then I move the window a bit and then it works. So yeah, uh, I think this bug is going to be addressed in the next X server. Uh, yeah, I can't remember where, but yeah, there is a patch for that. But can't remem remember where. Uh, I can, yeah, I can check if it's if it's there, but I'm pretty sure he sent it. Dave, Dave made the patch. Yeah, he asked me to test it, and I think I did, but I can't remember. <laughs> uh, okay, so first thing is good. Then uh, VDPO acceleration. So, up. So this is the black window, and then if I down like that two times, come on, yeah, now it works. So video acceleration is a flying dog. <laughs> And uh, you can tell it's um, using Nouveau because uh, V Depot acceleration. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Performance counters. Oh, you cannot see it. Okay. Uh, I can. Okay. Doesn't matter. Um. Up. I'm gonna stop that. So performance counters. Here you can see the number of instruction executed at any time. And that's using the performance counters. And the Gallium HQD, but for some reason uh, it doesn't see the, the right scale here. So we may have screwed something, but seriously, this is important. It just shows that we can read the, uh, the counters. And to read the counters, actually, we had to uh, add um, kernel uh, support, execution support on uh, Fermi and Kepler. Uh, Kepler was already there. It was added by um, uh, Kalim, and this one was added by my students uh, this summer for Fermi. So, yep, that's it. That's all the demos I have. <laughs>